Hello everybody, my name is Ampier Veep, and welcome back. It has been five months, roughly, since my last video, and I'm sure quite a few of you would probably be wondering where I've been. If you haven't seen my community posts already, this last semester was extremely stressful. There was a big stickler of a professor that had some very high requirements for what otherwise should have been a simple course, and as a result, I didn't really have the time to put into these videos. But that semester is now over, and I can finally get back to updating you guys on the progress being made on the project. Now with the huge gap in time between the last video and now, there have been quite a few changes on the project, which will require this video to be dedicated to it. I will be going through the Sentinel-2 update as per usual. I will show the A-B testing between the middle of January and the Sentinel-2 imagery from Monday. And then we can get into the latest news on the project. Before we get into that, let me just say thank you to everybody in the Discord server for posting and keeping everyone updated on the project who was in there. And if you ever want to have discussions about stuff on High Speed Rail in California or Brightline West or projects even outside of California and Nevada, like the Northeast Corridor or even different things across California itself that are not High Speed Rail specific, feel free to join our Discord server. There's a ton of people, they're all super friendly, and we have a billion different conversations there, and we even form meetups across the state. So feel free to join. The link is down in the description below. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on to the Sentinel-2 update. All right, everybody. On the left is January 11th of 2024, and on the right is June 9th, 2024. So we're starting off at the southernmost part of CP4, and as expected, not much has changed here since this area is basically fully completed. But you can see here at Kimberlina that the right-of-way is basically fully finished now. You can see that in January, it was you could see that the uh, top of the track bed is, is visibly improved. Moving further north, here at the Poso Avenue undercrossing, you can see that the right-of-way is basically done at this point. It's very hard to tell due to low resolution, but it's very clearly ready for tracks to be laid when that does take place. Here at the SR46 undercrossing, you can see that the right-of-way is basically done here as well. And here by McCombs, you can actually see some sub-road beds being laid for potential future track placement. Now, the contract for track placement is not going to take place until, I believe, the middle of next year, if I'm not mistaken. So that's some pretty good news. And over here at the canal that has been under construction and is the only thing keeping CP4 from being fully completed, we finally have the name of it from a recent High Speed Rail Authority board meeting presentation. This canal is named Canal 9-22, and this relocation, as you can see, is still not finished, but it has made some visible progress as the original canal alignment has been filled in on this part. And you can see right here, they have drained the canal. You could just barely see it there on the eastern side, which signifies that work is being done here, which is very good to see. This here at Peterson Road, you can see that in January, the right-of-way was not fully built up with this embankment, but as you can see now, it looks pretty good. That's a really good sign as it shows that we are making some really good progress again. And closer to Pond Road, you can see that this section of the embankment is also pretty much done. Much further along than before, you can kind of make out where the tracks will go, but the grass has not been put in there. Though that's not really a critical step for the project. It's just to prevent the embankments from eroding. Now, here at the north side of Magnolia Avenue, it looks like progress has reversed, but that's just the dry soil color. The actual paving seems to have been done on this north side, whereas in the past you could see that it was just the sub-road bed with no paving, which is a good sign. Here, over by the north-south canal relocation, we can see that the right-of-way is looking pretty good here as well. This has changed and looks to be basically at the final configuration. Good sign. Though a little bit further north of that, it does not seem to have progressed as much because you can see that there is not as much of a visible white track bed area. Whereas back in January, you could see that they were spraying it down with water, which resulted in this darker coloration. Um, this could potentially be updated as a new Sentinel-2 imagery as new Sentinel-2 imagery was taken today and should get updated sometime tonight. So feel free to drop by the Discord to see that. I will definitely be going over it. 
but I didn't have the ability to put that into today's video because it usually comes out around 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific time, sometime around there. And over here at the north-south canal relocation itself, you could see that back in January, the right-of-way crossing the new canal alignment was not quite finished, but now it very much looks complete. They're doing some kind of excavation here. It might be a borrow pit for these embankments. I'm not quite sure. It's very far away from a publicly accessible road, so we will probably never ever have street view access to this, um, and we will probably have to rely entirely on the authorities' footage for it. So hopefully in the future they release time lapses of the right-of-way itself so that we can actually see what's going on here. But there are a few power lines that we're going through here at one point. I'm not quite sure if those have been relocated yet. It seems like they probably will have, as the authorities' own documents say that all electric utility relocations have been completed as of this point. So we'll have to see. Moving a little bit further north here, just south of the Garces Highway Viaduct, you can see this section of right-of-way here on where my mouse is circling, looking not quite complete, where the areas north and south of it have the grass on the sides of the embankments. And as you can see here, as of right now, the embankments appear to be fully complete. You can see the little bit of white track bed here, but no grass on parts of it. Or on higher resolution imagery, there are fences being put up around the right-of-way. And although that's obviously not going to be visible in this, I have been updating OpenStreetMap with that information. So if you ever want to check that out, go to OpenStreetMap, follow the right-of-way north from Wasco, and you should be able to find it. They are dark gray lines following the sides of the right-of-way. And as the higher resolution imagery gets updated, it's not as frequent as Sentinel-2, of course. I will continually update it. So go ahead and check that out. Now, here at the Garces Highway Viaduct, you can see that the right-of-way here for Schofield Avenue was partially covered in dirt. But now you can see that they've cleaned it off. They probably ran a sweet street sweeper through here, and it's looking a lot better now. And it looks like they even put grass down on this flat section here. Beyond this, where Schofield Avenue previously crossed the new alignment, you could see that the roadway has been paved with this dark gray coloration. This northern part has a little bit of dirt on it, and there seems to be a gap right here where this track road is, so they might not be fully done with this, but this is just embankment work. So whenever they finish putting in the soil, if they've not done that already, they will be putting in the erosion prevention grass or riprap, which is the uh, stones along areas that usually flood to prevent water from washing away the embankments. Now we are just about to enter CP23. And as you can see right about here, back in January, there is a marked shift in the amount of progress that has been made. Bringing it forward to today, it doesn't look like too much has changed here yet, so we'll have to keep waiting. CP23 is currently going through with a lot of massive projects compared to CP4, which only had the Wasco Viaduct as its major construction project. Um, while CP23 has the Deer Creek Viaduct, the Thule River Viaduct, the Cross Creek Viaduct, uh, the Hanford Viaduct, the Dutch John Cut, Kings River, and Cole Slough, and Cole Slough Viaducts, in addition to the Conejo Viaduct. So there's like a billion things going on in CP23, and as a result, I don't think this area has a very high priority. I would imagine that a dirt embankment is significantly easier to just work on later when they have more manpower to dedicate to it. And you could pretty quickly knock that out with like a million dirt trucks, which I will bring up a little bit later because there is an area with where they're actually doing that. Now we're coming up on Avenue 24 and the Avenue 24 grade separation here, which is a box culvert sunken about six feet into the ground um, with water drainage pumps in it because this is a very flat area that I believe flooded partially last year due to the storms. Um, as you can see here, some work has been done, but street view vehicles have not traveled here, and I'm unsure if this is even a public road. I do know that Drone Zone Flyovers was able to get drone footage of this, so in theory, in the future, if people want to go out there, don't take this as legal advice. I don't know the legality of driving on this road, but you should be able to go visit this in person. Other than that, it looks like some progress has been made, but it's very hard to tell with this resolution because it's such a small structure. Moving further north to Avenue 56, we have some interesting news here. So I believe about a month ago, there was a road closure detour notification 
for Avenue 56 that they were transporting precast concrete girders from the Hanford facility down here. And also we saw in some of the authorities' pictures that the center of the embankment has been excavated out, which is a good sign as it means that potentially they either have already put the piers in and are going to install the girders soon, or they might have already installed the girders. So this is the first time I'm looking at it. Let's see what's happened. Ah, there we go. Okay. I don't see any girders installed yet, but you can definitely see that the embankment has been excavated here. Yeah, very clearly. So you can see that right about here on the left side of the right of way, the dirt just kind of stops and the same on the right side. And it looks like there might be a single pier and bent cap on top, which is a good sign. That means progress has been moving forward on this. Moving a little bit forward, we have a new project that has been confirmed as happening, which is a viaduct going across this rail spur to Alpa. Now, the name on the authorities site is different than the official name of the spur. This will start construction sometime within the next year. It's not a very big structure, and it's just south of the Deer Creek Viaduct, which we are going to get to in a moment. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Here at the Deer Creek Viaduct, you can see that it's hard to see what progress has been made, but a lot of progress has been made here. Most of the piers and bent caps have been installed, and we should start seeing some, in theory, we should start seeing some precast concrete girders or tub girders uh, brought to this site in the coming months. I'm not entirely sure what the timeline on this structure is though, as it's about 3,500 feet long and there are other more pressing matters like the Hanford Viaduct and the Thule River Viaduct where they're crossing active rights away. So we'll have to see. And here a bit north, we can see that this section has actually been cleared partially for the right of way. This is a good sign as it means that even more of the right of way is under construction now, which is exactly what we want. We want to see more of the derping moved, we want more of the land to be officially in progress and to close these remaining gaps in the right of way. I believe as of the most recent authority board meeting, there are about 25 parcels left that need to be purchased along the entirety of the 119 miles, which is a really great sign as all the land is purchased at this point. We've acquired all of it. Here at Avenue 88, absolutely nothing has happened. Um, probably for the same reason that a lot of other sites have not had much progress, which is Avenue 88 is not a critical bridge structure as it just connects this one uh, feed lot over here to State Route 43. Now, I would like this to be done because it's just a issue of installing the crash barriers and paving it and striping it. And then, of course, a utility relocation, which is just one power line, and then everything is done. But... I can understand why they're prioritizing stuff like the Hanford Viaduct, because those are much more complex structures to finish and are more time sensitive. Moving over here is another new structure that was recently added to the High Speed Rail Authority's website, which is the Lakeland Viaduct or Lakeland Bridge. Um, this is a short bridge crossing over this canal. And something notable about this canal is that in the storms of 2023, this area here was flooded completely. It was underwater, um, which means that it's a good thing that they're considering to build a viaduct here because I don't want another Tulare Lake incident to occur and have the tracks flood. Um, that will not happen, luckily, because I believe the entire right-of-way is built to withstand a 100-year flood. It's either a 100-year or a 500-year flood. Feel free to correct me in the comments. It has been a while since I've looked at the documents. But yes, this is a really good sign that they're thinking about that. We do need to have this parcel here purchased. Um, as you can see, that's not yet done. And you can even see where the water seeped into the soil here previously, and it's just starting to dry up here. Um, I'm hoping that the floods from last year have raised the water table enough that the land subsidence has stopped. Moving further north here to Angiola, you can see that back in January, the right-of-way was looking okay. It was very clearly not that far along, but as you can see now, it's looking pretty good. Now, on Street View, there is an incredible picture of a million, well, not a million, but like a hundred trucks at least of embankment soil traveling to and from these right-of-way sites. And it seems like that work has paid off. This is especially apparent right here, where you can see all of the soil here having been brought on. Okay, we're up here by Avenue 120, and you can see 
the absolute magnitude of the work being done here. This is an insane number of soil trucks, to be honest. And you can see they're crossing the tracks here. There's even more coming from over there. You can see more on the road already. It's just absurd how much... You can see just how much soil has been moved here. This is probably 10 feet of embankment here to get it above the former lake bed level. And you can see it extends all the way down there. Now looking at this back in January, you can see that a layer of gravel had been put down, but the dirt had not been fully built up yet. Now you can see here, the right of way is looking pretty good. You can also see the Avenue 120 grade separation here moving along pretty nicely. They are focusing mainly on the western half as the eastern half is currently being occupied by a road and it's probably not their biggest priority yet. We'll have to see what's going on there. Another thing is that since January, a new section of right-of-way has started here as well. You can see here, not much has, as you can see here, not much had happened in this area, but if we look now, boom, we are looking at a layer of gravel on the ground here and the area looks like it's in the same state that this section was six months ago. So that's a really good sign. So we should see a lot of soil movement here. And as you can see, even all the way up here, more work has been done. So we're looking great. This seems to have progressed even as far north as Avenue 136 by this feedlot where you can see the preparations for the embankment have made it all the way up to here, which is a really good sign. And now we are finally at the Tule River Viaduct. Comparing January to today, you can see that half the girders were installed then, and now we have pretty much all of them. And it seems like even some deck work is being done here in preparation for the guideway to be put on top, which is a good sign. It's difficult to see what else has happened here with the low resolution, but the bent caps here for the bridge supports to cross State Route 43 have been finished now, as far as I can tell, which is a really good sign. Moving even further north, we can see here at Avenue 156, this is a confirmed grade separation for this agricultural road. So this is going to become a small agricultural undercrossing, similar to one that was built between Avenues 8 and 9 in CP1. So small box culvert laid in underneath the track with a small pumping station. And you can see that some work has been done here, but it's very hard to tell with this low resolution. Moving even further north here, Whitley Avenue. We do have a completion date for this structure. This structure will be completed by the end of this year, which is a really good sign as we didn't really have any idea what was happening here as this project was delayed a bit due to the storms last year. So it's really good to see that they are making pretty good progress here. Moving a bit further north, we have a new change. So the sweet canal here, which is this canal coming from the northwest down to the southeast. Previously, you could see the realignment here was still under construction, but with this, you can see that they have finished flooding this section of the canal and they've even blocked off parts of it here on the old alignment. Now, whenever they finish with their construction work here, we should see this last section filled in with dirt and then the right of way can continue across. No progress has been made on the Orange slash Wakena Avenue bridge here over the railway tracks, over the high-speed rail tracks and the canal. So I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen there. I believe progress should start on that next year, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll have to see on that. Continuing north along State Route 43, we can see here at the SR43 overcrossing south, or what is now officially called the SR43 curved bridge, they have made some pretty sizable progress on the embankments, which is awesome to see. Now, you could very clearly see they've removed the old highway here, an embankment is being built up here, and dirt has been moved throughout the site. It's hard to see from this low resolution what's exactly happening here, but I'm sure the authority will post some more pictures in the near future. It appears that some progress is underway at the Cross Creek Viaduct here. You can see some orange coloration here, which could be grass, but it also could be some kind of form work. It's hard to tell right now. I don't believe that work is ongoing at the moment here as a result of the other major projects underway, but we'll have to find out later. Here at Lansing Avenue, it seems like there's some work going on here. You can see this weird angled dirt here, which could be land clearing for a future canal relocation, as this is supposed to be an agricultural undercrossing, but we have yet to see what's going on here. Here at the SR43 North Overcrossing, you can see that the old roadway is completely removed now and embankments are being fully built up here. The most recent street view for this is from March, where the embankments were nowhere near as built up, but Lucid Stew made a video recently where he drove by the construction sites in the Central Valley, and 
it looked very far along at this point. It seems like the embankments are probably two thirds of the way built out, and we should start seeing them finish that up and begin working on the embankment. We should begin see them working on the abutment, probably within the next four months. You can also see that the right of way surrounding it is looking pretty good, and that Jersey Avenue has been closed and the roadway has been removed. Here at Idaho Avenue, you can see some grass that was being put in back in January has now fully grown in, which is a really good sign. This canal has not yet been relocated, but I'm hoping that within the next year, this actually gets moved once they have more manpower to dedicate to it. No progress here at Houston Avenue. We are not sure what's going to happen here, but it seems like this structure is going to wait for Hanford Armona Road, which is the next one we're going to look at, as that is potentially going to start this year. And here we go to Hanford Armona Road, where before it was partially obscured by a cloud, but you could see that the right-of-way was just partially excavated. Not much had been done at that point. But now you can see that the right-of-way is actually cleared at this point. Some dirt work is happening on the north side, and progress is visibly ramping up. Though there is this small parcel here that is clearly not yet purchased. So that could be one of the 25 remaining parcels. And next up is the Hanford Viaduct. As of two weeks ago, the Hanford Viaduct had its girders installed over State Route 198. This is huge news because it means that the first of the two major crossings is now finished for this structure. I'm so happy to see that this is happening. Now, we are still waiting on the San Joaquin Valley Railroad crossing, and it seems like the piers are still being built up here as they weren't a, as big of a priority because they were not over a active highway. So I would expect to see that section start once the southern section is finished. Moving further north, Grangeville Boulevard has been officially confirmed to be starting this year, which is really good news. As the original start date for the structure was supposed to be, I believe, November or December 2022, but a SoCal Edison utility relocation was delayed. And as of the most recent Street View, which was taken in March of this year, that had not taken place yet. But that should take place soon, which is really good, as that means we can get that started. Some more progress being made here at Fargo Avenue where as of a couple months ago, the abutment started being built up on the western side, which means that work is now progressing again on this project. As you can see on the right, it's hard to tell what exactly has been done, but you can see that grass has been installed on the sides of the embankments, which is good news. And up here at Flint Avenue, we've got some really good news. This structure is set to be open in the next few weeks, if it hasn't opened already. Now, there was a canal that had not been relocated back in January, but as of right now, it has. And this structure, as you can see right here, there is a cul-de-sac that has been installed here, and the roadway on the eastern side of the right-of-way has been removed entirely, as it will not connect to anything, which is awesome news. We are finally finishing up another structure here. So these structures north of the Hanford Viaduct have just been sitting in a stagnant state for the last three or four years as a result of other more pressing matters like the Hanford Viaduct. And with the new funding, they can guarantee that these projects can start work, which is awesome news. I love seeing these projects actually get moving. No progress here at Excelsior Avenue as work is ongoing at Flint Avenue instead, but I fully expect that this will have some work being done once Flint Avenue is completed. And you can see here, not much has changed. Here at Dover Avenue, you can see that some grass was still growing on the sides of the embankments, and that is now fully done. This is looking pretty good now, and I think they are only waiting on... And I think at this point, the land required for construction is being given back to the original landowners. So this area should start being filled in with the orchards again fairly soon. So this will look a lot better within the next year or so. Here at the Dutch on Cut... We now have confirmation that this structure is underway and that this gray bridge structure is not a high-speed rail structure, but it is a temporary work trestle for cranes to access the right-of-way. They do have the piers finished with concrete, and in theory, they should be able to install precast girders soon or tub girders. So we will have to see what the authority posts on that because this is very far from a road that Street View has access to. Here at Cairo and 9th Avenues, they've made a bit more progress on the right-of-way, and it seems like the embankments have been fully built up to the sides, and I believe Cairo Avenue, which is this east-west road down here, 
has been open to traffic, but 9th Avenue is not fully completed yet. The edge walls on the viaduct are not complete and they just have rebar up right now. So we'll have to wait and see what's going on there. And here at the Kings River Viaduct, progress is not as far along, but they do have the temporary work trestle installed now, which is a good sign. We should start seeing some progress here soon as well. As with the Cole Slough, where another temporary work trestle has been installed. Moving forward here, we have the SR43 Tide Arch Bridge, which, as of April, has had its precast concrete girders installed, spanning the entirety of the structure's length, and we should start seeing more work done soon. This is a really good sign, and it's going to cross the future widened version of SR43, which they have plans to widen to four lanes total, two lanes in either direction from the current two lanes total. Here at Davis Street, you can see that the grass is now fully grown in. It's a little dry because of the summer and we have not got much rain, but in the winter, it'll look pretty nice and green. So this is just regular activities here in the Central Valley, but it's looking pretty good. Fowler Avenue is pretty much done as well. Not much has changed here. The same with Elkhorn, other than the fact that Elkhorn's grass has grown at this point as Elkhorn opened up later than Fowler by, I believe, a year and a half. So we are looking at some pretty far along right-of-way here. Here at the Conejo Viaduct, we can see that they have gotten the guideway started over the top of the viaduct, which is a good sign. You can see that straight line across here, which means that they are pouring the deck for it, the specific guideway deck, and edge walls might potentially be under construction at this point. We'll have to wait and see. The authority probably will be posting pictures about that fairly frequently as it is a major structure. And on the north side, you can see that the embankment is looking pretty good. They have installed tub girders spanning the distance between the abutment here on the north side and the pergola section and have been tying it in with rebar. The last photo we saw from that, I believe was in April or May, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe they've also installed tub girders on the south side as well. So they are making some okay progress around here. Moving further north, we are here at Mountain View Avenue, which back in January looked like this. But right now, we are looking at a really nice structure. We should be seeing this open to traffic sometime this summer as of, their, as of the latest authorities quarterly report, which is a pretty good sign. You can see all the roadways are paved, the bridge structure is done, the deck is there, and something new is here. I'm sure that you might be able to tell, but the real-lined BNSF trackage is this light gray colored area here. And that's a really good sign because that means that they are actually making progress towards realigning the BS BNSF trackage, which we were concerned about not seeing. Here at Nebraska Avenue, we can see that this land is being cleared again, which means that they might be getting this area started as the upcoming grade separation that I'm about to talk about, which is Floral Avenue, is nearing completion as well. Very good news from here though. Here at Floral Avenue, you can see the embankments were being built up back in January, but this area as well, is in a pretty good state. You can see that the embankments have been paved, the deck is done, and this driveway access is also finished. So we should be seeing this open to traffic around the same time as Mountain View Avenue, which is awesome news. Another important project has started. Manning Avenue, which is a project that I've been waiting for for a long time, has started construction. We can see here the embankment on the east side is being built up, and they've removed the roadway from the middle here, as well as having connected this BNSF uh, yard slash right of way with uh, ballast. So that's a really good sign. You can see the authorities' construction dirt grates help take dirt off of the truck tires after they leave the construction site. And you can see them from satellite view here. Moving further north here to South Avenue, you can see that the grass on the southeast side is now fully grown in, which is awesome. And here at Adams Avenue, you can see that the grass on this grade separation is also fully grown in now. Good news. And now we're entering into CP1. So... As you can see here, Central Avenue, they're making some pretty good progress. As of about a week ago, the authority posted pictures of the girders spanning from the west side of the high-speed rail alignment to the east side of the BNSF trackage, which is awesome news. This structure is, as far as I can tell, on track to open sometime near the beginning of next year. And that's another great separation in the bag, which is awesome. We love to see it. Here we are north of the Cedar Viaduct. Here is the South Golden State Boulevard Viaduct. And you can see that they've made some more progress here on the right-of-way. On the south side of this, there is an MSC retaining wall. And on the northeast side, there's also a little bit of a retaining wall, but also a dirt embankment here for emergency vehicle access. So we should be seeing some 
finishing grasses installed in this soon as well. Church Avenue has been delayed a bit. I believe this has been delayed to being the end of 2025, which is not great, but considering how large of a structure it is and how complex this is, it doesn't really surprise me. So we'll have to keep checking in on that. And finally, we are in downtown Fresno. Now, some huge news from the authority. We can see that the Tulare Street undercrossing and Ventura Avenue undercrossing here are much further along now than they were back then. The bridge deck is done for both of them. And according to the authority, the Union Pacific track relocation crews should be coming out either in June or in July to move the tracks back. And once that takes place, they theoretically could open the roads to traffic again. And then over the next year or so, they will potentially build up the high-speed rail bridge structures over those tr roads again. So we should be nearing completion on those structures. This is a really annoying area to build in due to how many bridges are necessary, but it could always be worse. Now moving further north here, some more progress has been made at the Fresno Trench where you could see that the red waterproofing membrane was still visible here. But now the complete concrete deck is done here. It's impossible to see what's going on here, but it's possible that they will relocate the south leg of the Y back over this bridge structure again. Once the track relocation crews come out, probably for the Tulare and Ventura undercrossings. So we'll have to see on that. And as you can see, and here at the Belmont Avenue grade separation, we have pictures from the authority where three rows of precast girders have been installed on the west side of the UP railroad tracks, as well as Golden State Boulevard here, or Motel Drive in this case is what it's called, has been removed completely in preparation for the trench to be dug here. Now, that's a good sign because it means that they're getting very close to continuing work to the north, but I believe they're going to be waiting on this grade separation here to be complete so they can fill in the Belmont Avenue uh, underpass. We'll have to see on that though. And brand new news, as of literally yesterday, we have the McKinley Avenue grade separation community meeting. So they are going to start this grade separation sometime in the next month or so. And as you can see here, the road closure states that work is going to start on July 8th and it will continue through next July. As you can see here, they are going to have a connector road here on the north side, which is slightly curved. They are going to remove the roadway here and build a bridge over the old alignment. And then once that's done, they will build a roundabout connecting the off-ramp from State Route 99 here to the connector road. And once that's all done, this great separation will be complete. And I believe at that point, they can start working on Olive Avenue, um, which means that Olive Avenue probably will not start until at least July of next year. Here at the Golden State Boulevard realignment, you can see that here on the left, the roadway was not very far along when we last looked at it, but now you can see that they've paved it and you can see they might have installed sidewalks here. This is good news because we've been waiting for a while on this. And once this section of roadway is done here, they can remove the old one and begin preparing the right of way for high-speed rail tracks. Here at Herndon Avenue, not much has changed yet, but I'm hoping that they start work on this soon because they should have the ability to now that Veterans Boulevard is open to traffic. This would consist of a three-level grade separation where you have the high-speed rail tracks going well above road level, the roadway for Herndon Avenue being sunken by probably 15 feet leading up to the UPRR tracks, and then the UPRR tracks continuing at grade here. This is a fairly complicated structure, so I'm not sure when this will start, but it should take place sometime in the next year or two. Here at Avenue 9, you can see that the grass is grown in now. You can see here that Avenue 17 is moving along pretty nicely and that girders have been put up across the tracks, which is great news. You can also see that the future roadway is cleared at least as far east as here. And the final change is Road 26. Road 26's grade separation has started construction. You can see the driveway connection for when they're uh, being moved here back in January, but it was hard to tell what progress was being made and when stuff was going to start. But now you can see that that's paved, the old one's removed, and there is a new structure, the Schmidt Creek Viaduct. It's visible in the most recent Road 26 grade separation drone footage at the very beginning, which they seem to have not labeled properly, and it's not visible anywhere else 
including in the official documents. So it's good to know that there is a new project being started for that. Uh, other than that, not much has taken place here. And with that, that concludes our Sentinel-2 update. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you again in two weeks, where we will be back to our regularly scheduled uh, topic discussions, as well as looking through pictures of construction progress. All right, thanks for watching. Feel free to join the Discord server, like I said earlier. We have a lot of discussions there. I go over all the new Sentinel-2 imagery, and people bring up new information and new pictures anytime we find them. And on top of that, I don't like advertising this, so I wait until the end. But I have a Patreon. If you'd like to throw me a couple dollars a month, I don't feel like you have to. But any money that goes to the Patreon will go directly towards making videos possible. Potentially uh, getting a drone. That's tentative, though. We'll have to see what's going on there. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time. See ya!